started making music when I was eight years old. I always had music around me when I was a kid growing up. It's all about creativity. It's just a big playground, you know. We're just having a really good time, really good time. Really. You can reach people and inspire people and, you know, open up people's minds to, into the possibility. I, I like to be proud of my own songs. I want to make good records. I'm trying to create a certain a sonic universe creating this kind of magic. And this is our soundtrack to creativity. I'm joined in the hot seat this week by, to my mind, two of Norway's most crucial house contenders, a duo as buoyant on the digital market as they're proving on the live circuit. It's Carl Lewis and Martin Daniel, better known on floors across the globe as CLMD. Boys, welcome to the show. How are we doing? Good. Great, Dan. Thank you for having us. 2013 was a marker year for you guys all around. What was the general mood at Camp CLMD as we transferred over to 2014? Well, we started the year off by playing in LA, which couldn't have been better. It gave us definitely the boost that we needed to get into 2014. And uh, yeah, so far so good. We're really looking forward to this year. Yeah, and to push on and do bigger and better things. As if you didn't have enough landmarks for 2013, the tail end of the year saw you guys make your live national TV debut over in Norway for the P3 Gull Awards. A huge deal and a lovely performance, to say the least. Tell us a bit about the experience of taking your sound live to such a huge national platform. Yeah, that was really exciting. And it was really exciting that they had the confidence in us to put on a show for them. It was just kind of finding out the way to make dance music look interesting on television. Uh, which made that to a really interesting uh, experience. Yeah, it wouldn't look particularly cool if we were just DJing for five minutes. So we wanted to do something different. And, and that was actually the first time Carl has ever played keys in front of a live audience. So why not start with the whole national <laughs> yeah, <it's> the <laughs> in Norway? Carl, be honest with us. Were you pretty nervous about that? I was so nervous. Uh, and I didn't play a difficult part, but it was just kind of you build up something in your head that is so huge and uh, the uh, the failure and everything and I was just focused on playing those five keys and repeating them over and over again but it was cool I managed to do it so then you have something to build on from there it, it was really fun because we we kind of had decided to do it all pre-prod kind of Carl was just going to fake it and then just the day before he's like ah oh, screw it I'm going to do this live uh, yeah it wouldn't have been the same to fake it kind of felt wrong I, I need to do this I, I thought so so is the live potential something you've always always factored in or is this something that you just took by the horns as and when it came around? Uh, I don't think it has influenced it but I think there's always been the, the interest that house music and dance music which is basically electronic music and most of it digitally made that it would really kind of uh, work as a, a live experience as well and you can swap these sounds with more analog uh, sounds and so on and, and then the energy in the music is there so why not kind of tried to get something more out of it but it was not a plan but it was a kind of an, a good opportunity with uh, the petrie uh, awards to kind of try it out and see if it will work it's always been kind of in the back of our head you know similar to what chemical brothers do or fateless or now even disclosure you know uh, to do something live with our sets in some ways but we never kind of figure out how to do it or have the you know the the time and the money to go into it and do it full on production but for these tv shows it's it's a different thing and you know we're we're kind of borrowing on on top of what the production from them are doing so we kind of can can figure out things and and try to like fulfill our our little fancy of doing something more live uh which is interesting and it's a breath of fresh air for us you know coming from the djing to be performing more as a band now yours has been a very interesting transition indeed you went from norway your native land and you moved to east village in new york something of a culture shock i would imagine how important was Scandinavia as a place to cut your teeth musically? And did you gain anything from the transition over to America and that sort of cultural gist? Well, uh, that's, a, that's a good question because for us, you know, Sweden has always been huge when it comes to electronic music. And you have, you know, I mean, they have the elite artists 
uh, in house music today. But Norway has not been the same, you know. There's not been any real big names within house music. So we were always looking out. We were never looking into Norway like that we could have a career within music in Norway, you know. We were always pushing out, you know, releasing our music abroad. Uh, and then suddenly, you know, the Norwegian radio with Black Eyes and Blue kind of picked up on that. And suddenly there we were, you know, and now we have the acceptance of the industry here in Norway, which is fantastic and gives us a good motivation because, you know, we're we're patriots like most people and and we love to play for our own crowd. And we, we love that, you know, that we can be accepted and that electronic music can really be fulfilled in Norway as well. Let's talk songwriting and electronic music. Both of you have intertwined the two with exceptional results. Um, has mastering both the conventions of traditional pop and modern dance music been a seamless task as it sounds on record, or has it come with some challenges along the way? It's a difficult question to answer in that way that most of the times you need something that you personally like for yourself something you want to hear and depending on what mood you're in or what day it is that track can be happy melodic or it could be dark and kind of more uh, weird in a way so it's more because we both love melodies we love strong vocals uh, so it's more yeah it's been difficult because it's difficult to write something that you really kind of love but it's more of a happy accident if I can say that, that the music that we've made and uh, the music that we love ourselves also can work on the radio or work in that sort of a setting. It's never been our intention to go in and make a radio song or a commercial track. It's, you know, we make music for us and for the clubs, you know, it's always that club focus. But as Carl is uh, points to, it's it's like, a, yeah, like a happy accident that it can transition into the radio as well. Between the likes of Stockholm Syndrome, your remix of Falling for Axton, and of course Fader on Trice Recordings, yours has been a welcomingly hard sound to place in just one box. How important is genre identity to you both in terms of the... The creative process and do you echo the thought that creatively dance music can suffer from a fixation on following genre convention i think genre identity is important in some ways but also how can you kind of play with that identity and the most important thing is trying to make your own identity so that you have your own sort of subgenre of the genre it's more about as i said earlier like you make music that you like yourself and so you to kind of place a genre onto it or what it is. It's up to other people to kind of name it. But I don't know if dance music is suffering from the uh, sort of fixation with following genre convention. It may be, but I don't know. What do you think, Martin? It's a hard question, really. I think that for our, our sake, you know, it's been, it's been more about, you know, having our sound and i think that you can you you will hear that it's a clmd production whether it's you know a more uplifting track or if it's a darker track or if it's slowed down you know we've done something like like our sin remix by am jedi which is super laid back you know almost like beach house and then you have you know like the the remix ep for following like angels which had like songs like uh, rain which is really hard and awkward but you still can hear that it's clmd in a way and i think that's the important part of it in the same way that you know look at pop music you'll have you know the the slow jams and you'll have you know the heavy hitting commercial tracks but it's still the same artist or the same people behind it and i think that's the most important part Right now, I feel that electronic music or house music is moving in the way where, you know, people are using a lot of the same tricks, you know, the same buildups, the same breaks, the same, the same sounds, really, which makes it hard to, you know, differentiate different artists. And uh, that kind of makes it all sound like the same blend. Uh, I'm not wanting to criticize anyone, but I think that, you know, for us, one of our biggest inspirations right now is Eric Pritz, obviously. And he's kind of nailed that make your own sound, you know. His, his music is his own genre, you know. You can't say that, you know, that's progressive house or that's, you know, electro or whatever. It's it's Eric Pritz, you know, it's Prida. Mm. And that's sort of what you want as an artist, that identity, that whatever you make, it's you. And uh, and that's, that's it. And if you look to other successful artists or successful artists in uh, the industry today, I think they're all connected to a certain sound that has made them popular. Now, you've ticked off a lot of landmarks, a lot of diverse leaps, to say the least. Uh, what do you consider to have been the most challenging aspect you guys have faced as a duo so far? 
I think that that's kind of been, you know, breaking through and kind of finding, you, you know, getting people to recognize、uh, our music and especially maybe the brand CLMD because, you know, starting out we had a huge kick with the with the message which Axwell picked up and did his own edit, you know, which which kind of gave us that way into the industry. But it took a long time before people were realizing who the artist behind it was. People knew our tracks, but they didn't know us. And that's still something that we're struggling with, you know, the the identity of owning our tracks, in if I can say it like that. And I think that that's kind of been biggest challenge, and also that、uh, we, since we are from Norway and we don't have any other Norwegian artists to kind of tie ourselves up to, you kind of had to find your own ways. You look at the Swedes and you see like how, you know, from Swedish house mafia to Avicii to Odenos to Alesso, you know, how they they're helping each other up and building that, you know, that following and that. That kind of crew, that kind of everyone supports each other. You know, we we kind of been loners over here in the, in Norway and kind of you know trying to figure everything out ourselves without really having that network and that contact sheet to kind of get in there. Now, word on the street is that there are some gems ready to emerge from you guys in the new year. Not to mention a big live landmark, as I'm aware you're going to be taking the Norwegian Grammys pretty soon. What can we be expecting from Camp CLMD for the months to come?、Uh, music. <laughs> <laughs> It's always that struggle to be more than satisfied with the tracks that we make. So at the moment, it's about finishing some of these projects and putting the last touches to it that will make, hopefully, make them special for other people and for ourselves. We can promise a lot of cool music, hopefully. It's that thing, you know, that we kind of ended in in a limbo between the commercial house music and the underground house music, which Stockholm Syndrome and Fader is the perfect examples of. And I don't think people really know what to expect from us. And you know, some people will get surprised, and some people will might maybe get disappointed because you know each turn is different, and we don't really know will the next track be more commercial or will it be more underground. You know, so it's interesting. I think that we're guessing as much as you guys are. But on the other side, we're gonna do a US tour coming up now. The dates will be released very soon, and then yeah, we're just gonna keep on working and get this stuff out there. And try to get around to most places that hasn't seen us and that has seen us already, and just share the music. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the House Sound Built Radio, and wishing you nothing but the best for 2014. Thanks well, so thank much for having us. us.